This is the Czech blog, and I'm here today with our friend Jator Pierre. Jator is the founder of We HLC, and of course, everybody knows him as Czech faculty member extraordinaire. How are you, Jator? Weird as usual. <laughs> yes, uh, we had a little discussion about that question before before we started, and uh, the question actually it's a. Uh, I like your take on that question because it's relevant to our topic today. Our topic is building a habit of self-awareness. And um, I said it looked to me like you woke up in a utility closet today. <laughs> um, but you had a great response to to that question. What was that response? <laughs> I think it was I was looking for some good lighting. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> there was that and there was a deeper answer, though. That's what... That's what uh. Well, I think the, the deeper thing that grew out of that was um, we, you asked the question about uh, is there any more to talk about in terms of the physical aspects of awareness. And uh, for me, something did come up, uh, which was uh, in my experience of doing mental and emotional work, uh, deep diving into my inner selves, uh, exploration of the shadow exploration of my light and dark sides, uh, archetypes, um, all of that stuff, uh, meditation, uh, awareness practices. There's been a point that I found, at least in my own experience, that is the way that we find ourselves eventually can become the way that we lose ourselves, no matter what that practice is. So a meditative practice can be an exquisitely powerful way to find yourself, the shadow side of that or the dark side of that might be meditation can be an exquisitely good way to lose yourself and distract from yourself. So for me, there's a light and a dark side to everything. And in my experience of that, because I've uh, grown a language of understanding myself, at least for what I'm aware of, and a language of psychology uh, and a language of uh, exploring and explaining and uh, feeling and and diving into all these different different areas, I found that I can essentially rationalize anything. I can give any situation purpose. I can give any situation the the uh, heading of it's necessary. Uh, I can keep myself in any situation. I can move myself out of any situation as well. So essentially what I'm saying is I can rationalize almost anything at this point. Why that's important for me is that back to the physical, which we were talking about, is it's been my experience that the body doesn't have a mechanism to lie. Our egos have a tremendous ability to lie and omit. Uh, so all of that rationalization, potentially, if you look at the word rationalization, rationalization, lying to self, potentially at times, maybe more of the dark side of that. So I've been in situations where I've danced with all of the diff these different ways of exploring uh, underlying triggers, relationship childhood trauma, what's coming up for me. And I've noticed that I've been able to keep myself in situations at times that maybe aren't as functional or as healthy as I think they are or I am making them through my distorted lens of rationalization, right? So in those situations, I've noticed that I will start to find different tension or pain in my body. So as an example, um, not that long ago, I was in a situation that I was gaining a tremendous amount of neck pain. So I never have body pain as far as I'm aware. So my body feels very, very free, uh, uh, very, very playful, very, very, almost wake up feeling like I'm not in a body for lack of a better uh, metaphor. So as this situation is occurring in my life and 
I was dancing with it in many different ways that I know how to explore what's going on and continuing to keep myself in it because of uh, looking for purpose or rationalizing myself into it again. Started to get a tremendous amount of neck pain and also started to gain some body fat. I was like, wow, that's really weird. Nothing in my life has changed, right? My food is the same, my working out, my working in, my meditative practice, my sleep, my hydration, my breath, all that perceptually the same, yet my body was expressing an underlying story that I was either in denial of or unaware of or did not want to see. And my physical body was calling out for my attention through my neck pain, through my uh, increase in body fat percentage. And as I extracted myself from that situation, neck pain, gone. Body fat dropped right back down to where it normally is. Now that could be another story that I'm making up. And for me in this moment, it's an excellent story. And I really enjoy it because my body feels like a biofeedback system that I cannot hide from or dance away from or rationalize myself out of. In any given situation, if I'm present enough in conversation or, or whatever it may be, to slow down and really feel What's going on in my body? Where am I feeling tension during this conversation? Where am I feeling pain? Where am I feeling restriction? Where am I feeling heat? Where am I feeling uh, cold? Uh, where am I feeling restriction in blood flow? All of these things, uh, uh, you know, are my organs and glands feeling constricted and, and, and tense? Um, all of these things for me are signs that something's out of alignment internally and again we can rationalize almost anything I don't know that I think it's probably possible that you can also trick the body but in this moment I'm using my body as my most honest feedback system because I know this thing can take me down all kinds of interesting pathways and my heart that thing, for me in this moment, my heart also comes with a level of interpretation through my intellect, which can distort the lens of my heart as well. My body right now feels like a very, very clear vessel of guidance and expression um, that maybe gets beyond rationalization. So, so this is the, the big reason right, for developing some and continuing. I, I imagine it's it's a journey that you're always on, but to develop the habit of self-awareness because your body, as you said, doesn't have a mechanism to lie. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's this fantastic source, this fantastic voice about what's going on in your life. I would agree with that statement. And uh, in my experience, um, literally, your body is a biofeedback system for where your consciousness is at in any given moment and where your unconsciousness is at in any given moment. Your body is, is almost like it's the tool that we've all been given to learn to understand our inner selves. If we can learn the language of the body, it's I mean, literally for me. Whatever shows up in the body is literally a story of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in our previous video, we talked about a lot of great ways to do that, right? Even if it's le le starting off with what we call the, the sort of mundane physical, right? Like eating or mm -hmm. when you're in the shower or, you know, any of those ordinary physical circumstances, a great place to start. Yeah. Um, at, the, at the faculty meeting, we were just at... Uh, I picked up a little nugget from Paul that I really appreciated around eating as well. Uh, I'm right-handed. Mm -hmm. 
So an easy way to grow some uh, a different level of awareness is start to eat with your left hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That brings your attention to that, the change. You have to feel that, you know, um, thinking about, do I put my right shoe on every day and then my left shoe or mm -hmm. room? <laughs> or, <laughs> right. yes. or barefoot yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and just changing that creating some change in your physical reality helps mm -hmm. to grow your awareness because you have to be aware to change uh, and as an example I'll uh, kind of uh, pull my pants down in, 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 a, in a sense right now that um, not that long ago you know I, I find myself to be a quite conscious person whatever that means and uh i was looking at my room for a belt I'm looking around where's my belt where's my belt so i go in my drawer i pull out my backup belt i start putting up my putting on my backup belt i'm putting it on this feels weird something feels weird here as i finish putting on my backup belt i look down and i have two belts on <laughs> so for me it's I think there's you know back to this rationalization thing I think as we do this work part of us may part of our ego may even grow into the story that we are so conscious we are so aware we are so knowing and for me that's a story of arrogance hmm. and uh, there is for me looking for the humbleness in all of this Mm -hmm. That moment with my belt was a very humbling moment for me because it showed me still how unpresent I can be, how unaware I can be, and that this is a constant play and playground of, of learning to bring awareness to self uh, in any single situation that you're doing, whether it's doing deadlifts or having a conversation or shooting a video uh, anything that we do can be turned, in my experience, into a quote-unquote spiritual practice. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great, and uh, uh, it sounds like everybody should have a backup belt, too. I envision you now, yeah. like, like, are you Batman, <laughs> right? Is this like a utility belt, <laughs> the Jatori <laughs> utility belt? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Well, that's I like great. That. Well, I, and I, I definitely get that sense. Right? I, I bet um, a similar one that probably anybody who has glasses could mm -hmm. resonate with, right, is you know walking around looking for your glasses only to stand in front of a mirror and realize you've got them on, right? The same. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not saying that I've done that, but um, <laughs> it's it's entirely possible that somebody might have done that. Uh, You've done that, James. Come on. <laughs> probably more than many more times than once <laughs> on the same day. Um, yeah. But that that's excellent, and and um, I think I've heard Paul talk about this idea of using change in your ordinary f physical circumstances to stimulate that sense of awareness. So whether it's eating with a different hand or sitting in a different place at the dinner table when you mm -hmm. eat, mm -hmm. uh, or having your family kind of mix up where they sit too, or yeah, all sorts of different ways, just a tiny tiny bit of difference to stimulate that sense of awareness. Yeah, I think a, a weird question to be asked about the sitting at the dinner table thing is <laughs> why do I sit at the same place at the dinner table with my family? Mm. And did I learn that as a child and I'm still sitting in my place? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and what does it mean for the adult to change places with a child, right? Yeah. Yeah. Try it, everybody. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> and let us know what you think. Let us know what the experience was. Um, well, this is great, Jator. Thank you so much for this again. Uh, I think there's some really fantastic tips here uh, for, for stimulating new sense of self-awareness and, and uh, not getting lost, right? Not, or, or, or finding a way past the rationalization. Um, mm. So thanks. Now, I, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what your body can tell you in moments of emotional, uh, sort of emotional peak. Um, and I think that's going to be really fascinating. So I'm looking forward to that next. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks to tour. We'll talk again soon. Later.